I was praying last week for our service last week and if you remember a few weeks ago I talked about and we're going to go on the same story about Jesus telling Peter to cast his net on the other side of the boat and when he did as Jesus said even though it's I think it seems strange to him because it's the same sea, same bit of water, same boat. But because he did it as Jesus did, so did him do. He had a boat full of fish. And I thought Jesus was saying to us as a church, we need to cast the net on the other side. And I thought, what does that mean? And... um, As I was thinking and praying about this last week, things changed in the church, just different things happened. I thought, wow, that's it. People were being prayed for and one thing or another. And I thought God was saying, it's the same equipment, you're just doing it in a different way. Sometimes we get so set in our ways of doing things that God hasn't got a chance to do anything, but God says, I want you to do it a different way. And again, this week, I feel God's using us in a different way. Instead of casting our net like we normally do and hope to catch, all of a sudden God's throwing the net over, telling us, throwing the other side. And all of a sudden, things are happening. God's around us. God's moving. Amen. God's moving amongst us. And I'm excited about it, even though nobody else isn't. <laughs> I'm excited that God's on the move in us as a church. That he's... Uh, taking our, our, our path perhaps in a slightly different way but in, in other ways it's the same one it was the same boat, it was the same net it's the same equipment that they used, it was the same people but because they did exactly as what Jesus said the result was totally different to what they did when they did it on their own selves so be encouraged, we need to keep our ears to what God's saying and how God's doing things. We can't be so stuck in our ways that we just do it because we do it each week. You know, we want to bring more than a song. I want to bring more than a song to Jesus. I'm fed up with just bringing a song. I want to bring the power of God, the anointing of God in amongst us. John chapter 21. 15 to 19. This is where Jesus restores Peter. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third, the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, Do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. We 
were looking a few weeks ago about Peter's character. If you notice that Peter was the person who denied Jesus three times. And I believe this passage of scripture was bringing Peter back to the realisation that Jesus had forgiven him. Jesus had forgiven him. Three times he asked him, and three times he denied Jesus in, in the, in the, in the uh, temple courts. And I believe it was a time that Jesus wanted him to realise that he'd reinstated him because he knew what was in his heart. And you know, sometimes we're like this with God. Who knows God's forgiveness? No, I mean, who knows God's forgiveness? Yeah, I mean to say, who knows God's forgiveness? That's three times. That's three times. You see, Peter, I believe, was in that mindset, well, where do I stand now with Jesus? Where do I stand with Jesus? You know, what is Jesus thinking about me. But Jesus knew what he was thinking, and Jesus was in that point of re establishing him into where he wanted him to be. Because we read a little while ago, Jesus said that upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church. And so he's re establishing him into that position of knowing that Jesus had forgiven him. Three times he denied him. Three times Jesus got him to say, do you love me? And so on, because of this, he all of a sudden, his mindset, I want to catch hold of that, we've been talking about it, his mindset was set, God, Jesus has forgiven me. And I want you to catch hold of that mindset. The Bible tells us if we come to him and confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us, from unrighteousness. Our sins and our iniquities, he will remember no more. And I really believe that Jesus was trying to get that mindset into Peter or into Simon, whatever you want to call him. In verse uh, 11, I think it is. I thought I had it wrote down, but I haven't got it wrote down. But in verse 11, on the third time, what did Peter say? Yeah, because you know all things. You know it. So why are you asking me? You see, what happened between the first and the third time was all of a sudden there was a bit of passion coming out. You couldn't imagine him. The first time, yes, you know I love you, Lord. Yes, you know I love you, Lord. The third time, a passion came out. And I believe Jesus is looking for that passion. Because it's a passion that he needs for Peter to go on and do what he had to do. It was a passion that Jesus wanted to draw from him. And the first two times, he didn't really get the passion. But the third time, he's got the passion. Where's the passion? Where's our passion for Jesus? Where's our passion for Jesus? You know, it was exciting to hear about Gary. And all of a sudden, there's a passion comes. God's looking for people with passion for him. A passion for his name. A passion to do what he's calling them to do. Peter was being called to do a big thing. You know, it wasn't a mean feat. He was going to have to be the, the shepherd that was going to feed the early church to get the early church in a position 
where it was able, with 12 people and a few more, to take the world. And God wanted to find that passion in him, to draw that passion out. And the third time, he said, you know all things, Lord. You know what's in my heart, in other words. You know my heart, my heart is for you, it's not against you. My heart, though, despite what I did, is for you. And God's saying, that's the sort of passion he's looking for to this day and this age. For people who've got a passion to do what God wants them to do. A passion. That's more than just a thought. More than just an action. It's more than just thinking something. It's putting our, our thoughts into action. Because he wants, wants people of passion in this day and age. To reap the harvest that God's got. You know, we read that God's got a plan for each one of us. Do you know that? God's got a plan for each one of us. Do you know that? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you better have, because I haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> you see, when you begin to realise God's got a plan for us, and we start to put it into action, and we see the, the plan start to materialise, isn't that exciting? I've never built a house. My son has, and I've helped him a few times, but he gets some plans and he looks at them and he starts to build this house. And when it's finished, I think, wow, well, I wouldn't have dreamt it was going to be like that. But he's got the plans and he knows how to build it and he knows where to put the doorways. Goodness. And he knows where the windows are going to go and he knows where the bathroom and the toilet because he puts that in, in the foundation. So that when that's built, it's that's like God with you and me. He's building us day by day into something. He's got a plan. And we've got to have a passion for what God's doing for us in our lives. You know, it was very profound what, Jesus, uh, that, uh, what Peter said or Simon said. He said, God, you know everything. You know my heart. Isn't that profound? In one way, isn't it exciting? God knows. In other ways, we think, oh, he knows everything. He knows where we're telling the truth or we're just mouthing something. You know, when we sing songs, are we singing them because we believe them or are we singing them because it's the next thing on the sheet or on the overhead? God knows what our passion is and what we're like. It says in Matthew, he says uh, about some people, you worship me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. You see, God knows. He knows. It says in the Bible too that it says that when we pray, God knows what we're going to pray for even before we pray. That's a bit uh, daunting, isn't it? But he still loves us to pray. Because he loves to hear us talking to him. So let's just catch hold of this. God knows. First of all, God wants us to know that we're forgiven people. God wants us to know that we're... And if you don't feel like that, get someone to pray with you that God, that they will, God will reveal to you that you are a forgiven person in his sight if you put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus. Let's remind ourselves God's looking for a people of passion. 
That means going beyond just being polite. A passion is more than that. And God knows what's in our hearts. More than sometimes we do. Sometimes we think we're not good enough. But God says you're good enough. Otherwise I wouldn't have chose you. To do what I've got you to do. You know. Sometimes God. Gives us things and we think. We'll never do it. I don't know what Peter thought. But you know, God will give us the ability to do what he calls us to do because he doesn't call us to do something he knows we can't do. i say that again, if I can. God has called us something to do even though we don't think we can do it, in other words. Because he'll put it in you. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you've been with us. You've called us by name. And you know each one of us. And I ask you this morning that you'll just speak to each one of our hearts. You are the lifter of our souls. And I want you to lift everyone in this room. To know, but to know, but to know that you are for them. Because if you are for them, who can be against them? Be all that we need this morning. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.